All right, now comes the really tough part, which is animating the mask. You animate the mask by moving a lot of points throughout the majority of the clip. What I have going for me is that it's a 10 second clip and Ashley's performance is mostly contained with her head and her shoulders. So she's not moving left and right and she's not making any wild hand gestures. So I don't have to mask all that. I'm just primarily focusing on her face and the subtle movements that she's making with her face because the scene itself kind of the emotions were very contained that it works for me so really think about that scene and even make that call is it worth it for me to film this during the day and convert it into night or should i just wait until the sun sets now animating this mask might seem daunting at first but really it, it it's just practice all it is is practice the more you work with animation the more you animate the better you get at it the only annoying part about animating masks is that it is time consuming as I'm playing through the clip, especially on the left side of her face when she's making these subtle movements, it's pretty obvious that the light is not matching her face movement and that's one of the reasons you want to animate the mask. Basically you're going through the clip and everywhere there is a drastic change in movement of her face, you want to create a start point and then move it to that end point and then kind of do that for the entire clip. Again, it's something that takes practice. You want to do this maybe a couple times if you're just getting into masks and animation, but the third time you do it, it's going to look great. All right, when you click on that mask layer and you click on that little time stamp next to the mask path, it's going to create a keyframe. Here's a tip when you're working with masks. Create an imaginary point on the actor's body or face, in this example, Ashley's face. I'm creating an imaginary point on the top left or forehead right over here. And I'm going to try and move that mask to wherever that forehead is moving. And pretty much as I said before, I'm just going to slowly move across the timeline and see spots where there's a lot of movement. You can even rotate the mask whenever necessary. And it's a process of trial and error. Sometimes you're creating a keyframe, you're taking it off, you're creating one other one, you're taking it off, you're really playing with it. I'm going to add these keyframes based on places where I think there are lots of movement and where I think the mask needs to move. I've created a lot of keyframes and as I'm playing it back, it is a little um, abrupt, especially on the bottom because the primary focus was the top left of her head and obviously when she rotates her head, that little motion is creating some jagged animation. That's really distracting me and making it obvious that this is not natural lighting. There's more being done behind the scenes that I don't know about. What I want to do, unfortunately, what I have to do for this particular scene is go through this entire scene and move these points, especially near her chest, to another imaginary point so you don't get that awkward jumping motion. So for this example, I'm going to imagine that point to be right near her hair where her hair is kind of touching her shirt. So I'm going to make that as an imaginary point and kind of move all these rogue keyframes to that particular point. So you can see this is a very painful process and very painstaking and it does take uh, some amount of time but I'm going to tell you, if you do this and do this right and do this with some dedication, that scene is just going to be even more convincing. That's just going to make it so much better. Now playing through the frames, it's actually better. 
There's some jerkiness here and primarily that jerkiness is because I've added a lot of keyframes. So if you see my control panel on the right here, in animation sometimes you can just tell by the keyframes what's going wrong. And here I can just tell by looking at the keyframes that what's going wrong is that I'm having too much keyframe for a scene with very subtle movement, very subtle animation. There's two ways to do this, right? Especially for my scene. Um, one thing you can do is just go through all these scenes, all these keyframes manually, see where there are drastic movement and just take out keyframes that are unnecessary. Or you can just eyeball it and just take out keyframes that are too closely together. So there's two options. And again, doing the latter will give you a little less accurate results and actually going through all the keyframes and removing unnecessary keyframes. So for this example, I'm just kind of going through them and doing a mix of both. This is also a trial and error process where you're taking out keyframes, you're undoing your deletions, maybe you're adding a new keyframe, but you want to make sure that there's some consistency in the lighting. And consistency in the lighting in the sense, especially the primary point of focus. And for my example, the primary point of focus is the actor's face. And I want to make sure that that mask is moving consistently on her face. I don't want it to be really jagged and really jarring on her face because that's going to take the audience out of this illusion that this is a real night shot. gotten it to a point where I really like it but there's still some weirdness going on bottom of the frame near a chest where we tried to match that keyframe that was jumping around it's not quite working so here instead of going manually and fixing that there's a different tool you can use <laughs> 